So today, you're going to be hearing a story about how I got my identity stolen. Uh, so gather around the fire, boys and girls, it's time for a story. Now, this story all starts in about October 2015. So um, towards the end of last year, one day I get a message on my mobile phone saying, Congratulations, your new mobile plan comes with 24 months uh, free subscription to Spotify Premium. And I'm like, well, that's great, but I don't remember signing up for a new mobile phone plan. So I head on into the local uh, Vodafone store in Chatswood and I ask them, hey, um, what's the deal with this SMS message? And they look in their systems and they ask me, did you walk into North Sydney earlier today to apply for two iPhones on contract? No, I did not walk into North Sydney today to apply for two iPhones on contract. They call up North Sydney and North Sydney says, hey, someone walked in, applied for two iPhones on contract. Here's the Medicare and driver's license cards that they submitted to us. So they uh, fax that over to us. Uh, and I looked at that and someone had actually seemingly taken my uh, Medicare card and my Australian driver's license card and they had uh, basically made counterfeit copies of the cards and all the card details were correct except that the photo was swapped out. So I said, okay, I, I think I'm going to go to the police station now. So I go to the police station and I... Uh, explain the whole situation to the police and the officer is kind of like, well, um, yeah, it sucks. This kind of thing happens a lot. Um, he, I didn't get a real strong sense that there wasn't going to be too much that they could do about this, but, um, you know, that's sort of understandable. And then just as I'm walking out of the police station, having filed the police report, uh, I get a call from the Vodafone Chatswood store and the lady that I was just speaking to says to me over the phone, hey, the person that we were just talking about who went into the North Sydney store, he's just walked into the store right now uh, here in Chatswood. So what should I do? And I say, well, can you see if you can sort of hold him in the store? She says, I'll, I'll try. And at this point, I'm just like, okay, so we're going to get the guy. He's right in the, he's right at the store. Let's, let's do this. So I run back into the police station. I look like, I must look like a crazy person because I run in and I'm all breathless and I'm like, there's this guy, he's at the, the store now, um, it's the same guy. The, the officers are kind of like, oh, okay, so um, uh, we're gonna go over there in a second. Uh, if you can contact uh, the shopping center security, uh, let them know to hold the guy in the store. Um, and then we'll be there shortly. I call uh, the shopping center security. I, I must sound like a mess over the phone because they clearly don't understand what I'm saying. They're just like, okay, so there's, I just need to go down to this Vodafone store. Uh, you wait outside and, and just explain the situation to me. So I go back to the Vodafone chats with store. I'm standing outside the door. I can see that there's this guy in the store. Um, this uh, guy who, an, another um, you know East Asian guy, uh, sitting there just going through uh, mobile phone contract and the and the security guard comes and he goes like so what's going on and I go well that guy is uh, he's got counterfeit copies of my ID so they go okay so we move into the store uh, the the lady from the Vodafone chats with the store she says take a seat uh, she comes over with the guy's IDs and shows me and shows me and shows the security guard look these are the IDs Meanwhile, the other staff members in the store are very quietly and subtly uh, asking other people from the store to just kind of leave slowly and then they close the shutters and then now it's just me and the guy sitting on the other end of this bench. We're both sitting on the end of the bench. At this point, it is sort of an awkward situation because I, uh, I, I, I don't you know, stare in too intently at the guy, but I get the impression that he kind of is guessing that something is up. A bit later on, the police come in and the officers, two officers come in and one officer looks at the guy and they're still kind of sitting there and he's just on his phone texting. The, the officer goes, does he, does he know that he's in trouble? And the other officer goes, well, if he doesn't know, he knows now. So they go over to this uh, gentleman and they ask him, what's the deal with these ID cards? And the guy just keeps saying, pardon? Pardon, And it's not clear to me whether he's pretending that he doesn't understand English or that he's just in such a state of shock that he just can't 
you know, respond to the, to the police officers. So eventually the officers kind of say, like, um, who are you? Like, like, whose ID cards are these? Who are you? And the gentleman is like, I'm, I'm, you know, those are my ID cards. And the police officers point to me sitting at the other end of the bench and go, no, this is his ID. Who are you? So the officers ask me to go down to the police station to take a statement. You know, at this point, I'm feeling pretty chuffed because, you know, yeah, we got the guy and the, and the, and the officers are kind of like, yeah, it's, it's not usual that, you know, we can make an arrest in this situation because a lot of this ID theft occurs. Uh, you know, a lot of these IDs just kind of float around and people buy information off the dark net and then they use them to get mobile phone contracts and stuff like that. And from uh, the perpetrator's perspective, it must have been pretty crazy because he walks in into North Sydney, applies for two iPhone contracts and then walks into another store about two hours later and immediately gets arrested. And the only reason why that happens is because I so happened to go to the same store previously to talk to a specific person about this um, ID issue. So uh, in that way, I'm sort of lucky. So I'm feeling really kind of like, yeah, chuffed. And then I go home and later that evening, I'm thinking, hmm, that guy didn't really seem like the criminal mastermind behind the whole ID theft. Maybe I should, you know, just check up on something. So um, I do some Googling and I find out actually the first thing you should do if you think your ID has been stolen is that you should go and um, check your credit report. So I ask for a copy of my credit report and then I see that from September in 2015, people have been going around with my uh, details and making applications for credit cards and home loans uh, in my name um, to five or six different banks. So they've gone to uh, Westpac, St. George, HSBC, NAB, uh, ANZ. So this is a whole nother can of worms. I spent the next about six months going to all the different banks to find out uh, exactly, you know, what went on. And uh, it's, it was a tremendously frustrating experience because each of the banks has a, a, a really inconsistent way of dealing with these things. It sort of depends on who you speak to at the branch level, whether they know who to put you through to talk to, like who is the relevant department. I go into a Westpac branch and say, Hey, um, I think someone applied for a credit card in my name. Uh, are you able to confirm that, like whether a card was opened? So the lady uh, pulls out the details and they see that, yeah, actually another account was open for this person um, for under, under this name, but uh, I can't tell you anything about this account because the system considers this to be a different person because the name is spelt slightly differently. And I realize now that um, it's because the, the person has actually taken my uh, middle name, which is my Chinese name, and used it as my last name so that um, they can kind of swap around these fields and it, and it sort of doesn't look too strange. So I go, okay, so you can't tell me anything about whether this card was opened or not because I, uh, my driver's license and stuff was stolen and you know this this is a fraudulent account and and the lady's like I can't tell you anything um, and I go so okay you don't have to tell me anything um, but can I just ask you to uh, flag this account as fraudulent so someone else in the bank can have a look at this and she says no I can't do anything with this account you're not the same account holder so I'm just like so you're telling me that if I come into your bank and say that there's another account where they have the same listed birthday as me, the same driver's license as me, the same address as me. Um, and I tell you that that account's fraudulent and you might have extended credit to a, a, a fraudulent, you know, a criminal. You're not going to do anything about it. And she just goes, well, I, I'm just going to go speak to my manager. So she goes out the back uh, and then she comes back and she's like, no, you're going to have to get a court subpoena to get any of this information and blah, blah. And at this point, I'm just like, okay, whatever. So I go to ANZ and ANZ is really 
much more on the ball about this. As soon as I explain the situation, um, uh, ANZ goes, we'll look at this immediately because I realized um, from, the, from what the credit report told me that it turns out that ANZ actually did open a credit card uh, to this individual. So they're like, thank you for letting us know. We're gonna get this uh, written off for you. Uh, here's the contact of who you need to talk to. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put through this to the applications fraud department. So there's, there's fraud departments for banks and then there are specific departments for deal with different kinds of fraud like application fraud or credit card fraud or that kind of thing. What you need to do is speak to someone about application fraud. So that's really helpful because it tells me I now know the exact keywords uh, to go to each bank to say, I need to speak to someone in the application fraud department. And that's basically the next six months of me going to different banks. And of course, different banks have different procedures. Like later that day, I just went to another branch of Westpac and explained my story. And this time I spoke to someone who was like, yes, um, this is what we need to do. Some banks are better than others. I went to uh, a branch of HSBC and literally ask them like, do you have a, a number for the fraud department that I can contact? And they say, um, no, we don't have a direct number. Like we, we can't put you into contact with, the, with that department. And I'm like, okay, so you're a bank. You must surely have uh, a way to contact the fraud department. And they say, well, there's this email address you can send to. So I send an email to the email address and then it bounces back. And I come back to the branch and I ask them and they say, um, Oh, actually, yeah, I've sent emails to that, that email as well and they have bounced back, so I don't know what's going on. And I'm just like, okay. So, and the only reason why I'm, I, I am forced to go to the branch is that if I, uh, none of the numbers are listed on the website, none of the details, and uh, if I call over the phone, I just put, get put through to like five different operators. Anyway, so the reason why, I mean, I guess I should mention the reason why I want to, I had to go to all these different banks is because it looks like on my credit report that in the space of a few months, I went to five different banks to apply for a credit card, which uh, is not gonna look great um, for any sort of future credit application, uh, especially because I was sort of rejected each time because they were fraudulent applications. And the uh, crazy thing is that if a bank gets a fraudulent application, they can just mark it as fraudulent, but they don't, you know, they don't update the uh, the credit reporting agency to say, hey, we, we determined that this um, application was, was fraudulent. Um, and they don't have to notify the person who the details are that the, that has been stolen. So um, there are apparently laws and various procedures about how this has to be handled in Australia, but it seems like it's fairly sort of um, inconsistent between the different banks and the, and the training for the different employees about how they proceed. Blah, blah, blah. So it has been a sort of a nightmare that's only very recently, and the only reason why I'm making this video now is because it's only very recently that I could clear it up because I, what I had to do is sort of like a pincer movement where I spoke to the credit reporting agencies and I spoke to the banks and I told the credit reporting agencies, um, the banks are gonna you know, make this correction and then I told the, the banks that the credit reporting agency is gonna make this correction and can you please, can the right person from the reporting agency and the bank communicate because you both know, like you, the bank knows it's fraudulent but they had to contact the reporting agency to get it removed and the reporting agency it's knows it's fraud, like has the power to remove it but they don't know who to speak to in the bank and, and, and finally across three different credit reporting companies because there are, um, three private companies in Australia that keep credit uh, reports on, on individual people, I finally got all the entries removed. Um, so what did I learn from this and what is something that I can tell you? Uh, first of all, um, be careful about your ID. I do not know how my Medicare, which is sort of the Australian... Uh, the Australian uh, Universal Healthcare kind of card, and and it was, I know I would show you, but I've learned now that it's it's a horrible idea to show people your ID unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, that ID is is sometimes used for for identification in Australia, and also my driver's license, which is a photo ID with my photo and and that kind of stuff. Um, be careful, obviously, who you show it to. Always ask what 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 people do with your with your details now. The fact that my Medicare and driver's license card were both stolen together tells me that they were actually probably both copied at the same time. And the only time that I can think of when they were both copied was when I was making an application 
uh, either to Vodafone or Optus or a telco company for a new contract and that's when they make a photocopy of ID. I went down to the Optus store where I signed a contract and I said, hey, what do you do with those IDs that you make photocopies of? And they said, well, we used to just keep them in a folder out the back and then Optus kind of told us we have to stop doing that. And I go, well, that, you know, that probably hasn't helped me. Another thing that I learned is that, um, check your credit report because you can get free copies of your credit report, at least in Australia, you can ask for them, you can see who's been making applications, you can actually sign up for alerts uh, so that you can go to a credit reporting agency and say, let me know whenever anyone applies for credit in my name. Now, in case you're wondering sort of what the resolution was with the, the original person who, who stole the, um, who, who got the actual physical counterfeit copies because I'm sure all the other bank applications were done by different people on through online applications, blah, blah, blah. The person who actually walked into the Vodafone store, turns out they were like some 19 year old kid. Um, they didn't have to face any sort of real jail time or anything like that. It was a sort of situation where apparently what happens is that uh, they, they just come in uh, with the, with their parents and the police tell them that was a very bad thing that you did and now your parents have to know that you stole someone's credit card, um, stole someone's driver's license and, and um, you know, so there. So you can avoid a federal offense, you can, but very bad, don't do it again. So um, I guess it's the uh, equivalent of detention. I guess for a 19 year old, you don't really wanna send them to prison because it's not exactly, uh, you don't exactly come out of prison, the most well-adjusted person, I'm assuming. All I can say is that I, when I was a kid, and I remember uh, one time, because I was being a little shit in class, um, my teacher made me sit outside the classroom, and just then, uh, as I was sitting outside, my mum came to pick me up from the classroom, and she looked at me, and I looked at her, I'm sitting out in the classroom, and I was mortified, and I felt so bad um, and embarrassed, um, because, you know, I was in trouble, and, and she was there to see it. Uh, I I hope that the person who who did steal my details feels some of that that it feels at least a, a fraction of that horrible mortification that I felt that day. So that's um that's the story of how my how I got my identity stolen. Uh, I hope it has been uh, entertaining at least. Um yeah check the video description for a links to some of the uh, agencies that you should contact if you do get your identity stolen. And if you have gotten your identity stolen, uh, if you feel like it, please let me know your story in the comments because uh, it sucks. So yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll see you next week. Cheers.